everybody. I want to quickly um, uh, explain why we're here. Uh, every single year, the code-minded folk of Commanda are sent away somewhere to do some hacking for about three days. The projects are usually decided beforehand in a fun little spreadsheet. And then teams kind of get together, and then they create something they quite like. Uh, we like showcasing this uh, for a lot of reasons. It's a fun event, but also because a lot of these Hack Day projects end up kind of becoming some version of, um, of a feature in the product in the end. And some of them definitely qualify that. And there was a lot of them. There was a, um, there's a lot of projects. We just picked five of them to show here. The, if you go to blog.comuna.org, or com, maybe, I don't know, uh, you'll find uh, the rest of them kind of in more detail and where to find them. OK. OK. I Good. guess it's time, right? Let's do it. It's time um, the first for the first presenter. And first up is uh, Philip. Philip is um, part of the ZB team, and he's taking very good care of it. Um, he built a very interesting project um, because he loves playing cards, and his colleague um, Chris as well. He can't be here today, but uh, Philip will take good care of it. I'm looking forward to what you can do with playing cards and a workflow engine. So let's see <laughs> what's going on here. As you mentioned, we like to play games. Um, so for the hack days, we decide, OK, we want to model a game in BPMN. So basically, we want to have an executable manual. So this was the idea. Um, the game we picked was Exploding Kittens. Um, it's a card game. You can play it up to 10 players. It's really cool. It's um, dynamic and it gets explosions, and it's really cool. And so, and one, another thing was we wanted not to just um, model it with BPMN, but we also wanted to execute it with CB. So we want to see how CB if CB can handle such complex workflow, can model it, can execute it, use all the tools around CB. And OK, let's see what we did. And we model the process, and we end up in something like this. Um, it's quite complex um, <laughs> process. What you have here, we have multi-instance. We have parallel and sequential multi-instance. We have loops in the process. We have. Um, timer events, you have message events. So basically, every uh, thing we have in CB. And we managed um, to execute this with CB. And that's, um, yeah. And on top of this, um, we also want that you can actually play this. So we created also a Slack application. And this allows you to play the game in our Slack channel. and choose the card you want to play, see the game status updates. And yeah, I just want to show okay, how this looks look like. Um, here we have the channel. There are two commands. First, you can um, see the manual. It's how to play. You get a briefly introduction, how, this is the, um, how you should play this. And you also um, see the image um, for the BPMN di diagram, which describes how you should play it. And <laughs> Um, you can also start a game and invite all the players um, you want to play with. I invite myself, I invite Chris, and I invite um, Bot. And <laughs> now we start the game. <laughs> so now the Slack, Slack application here. Um, yeah, I'm writing messages. Um, here I see, OK, I have my hand cards. Um, the first was the Bot to play. He didn't play any card, he's just draw a card. Because in the game, you can play uh, all your hand cards, and by the end of your turn, you need to draw something. Uh, OK, um, I'm the next one. I can play um, an action card. I can here alter the future. That means I can look at the top three cards, change the order of the cards, because it can be an exploding card. If I draw an exploding card, I explode, and the game is over for me. So, um, But unfortunately, the bot noped it, so I can't. Um, play my action, um, so I just skip my face. I don't want to draw a card because it can be exploding. I don't know. <laughs> because I wasn't able to change the future. Um, now Chris is um, there. He will play, and he plays an attack card. Um, nice thing. Um, so <laughs> the bot is now uh, needs to um, do two turns. The bot plays. OK, um, has two cards. He draw two cards. It was lucky, not an exploding card. Um, OK, now we can play the whole game. And we can have a brief look. Um, it's OK. Let's check um, the Kamunda cloud. Um, let's go to operate and see our instance. Here we have one instance, which is created just now. 
um, we can say, okay, we, okay, open the instance view, and here we can say, okay, we did a couple of turns, and so this is really running on the Kamunda cloud, and now um, you can also all play it, because um, you can play it on the um, CV Slack channel, so go to <laughs> cv.io, um, scroll down, go to CV Slack channel, um, it opens the Slack channel. <laughs> um, select the channel which is called Exploding VPN Game, and then here you can play. So I invite all you, all of you, just go there and play the game. Have fun. Thanks so. Alrighty. Uh, so next up we have uh, um, a project by Nicholas and Lars. It'll be presented by Fifi uh, because uh, you know why not? He's, he needs to do something while he's up here. So um, this is a project about a GitHub plugin to allow you to be able to actually visualize models. If you upload them into GitHub, you'll be able to actually see them. It generates uh, the, the uh, image from the, um, uh, from the Beefman model. And uh, um, it's a really, really, really useful thing that we've come across because of the various varieties of uh, uh, questions we get around models. Cool. Thanks, Nile, for the quick introduction. Um, and it's a pleasure to take credit of some other people's work. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Um, so first of all, who knows BPMN? After two days, I think that's everyone, right? So who knows GitHub? OK, <laughs> cool, almost the same people. That's, that's great. Um, so um, two really bright people out of Kamunda, they decided to help help us, kind of, because um, many of us, I guess, um, are using GitHub or actually Git to store BPMN diagrams right now. We have seen Kavemo, you can s upload your diagrams there, you can collaborate, but sometimes also when you add um, properties to in the Kamuna Modeler as a developer, you end up in committing that into your project, let it be a Spring Boot application. Um, and one of the challenges is actually that once you committed this BPMN file into, into something like GitHub, you have um, sometimes problems in, in like really seeing what's going on. So for example, um, I have this small little diagram that I prepared here, and behind BPMN is of course the specification. Um, this is in the end XML, right? Um, so it's just a lot of text. And um, for me, and as a developer, this is actually hard to use uh, to understand what's going on. And also, if the business side goes into the GitHub, they sometimes have access, access to it, actually. Um, then they find this, and they have no idea how that looks like. Um, now, what, they, what the guys built is um, actually quite cool. So one thing we could do, for example, is we can get the raw um, data here now of this um, BPMN diagram. This is nothing that they built, but a GitHub feature. Now I can copy this URL. And let's imagine I write, want to comment um, about this, something about this um, diagram, that something is not working. I can create a new GitHub issue and say something doesn't work. Um, then I will go ahead here. I will continue with something like this, um, my process maybe. And what I will do then is I will just copy this um, URL that I got here, and I will submit a new issue. And what will happen then, um, if the Wi-Fi allows me to do that, um, there is automatically some small bot running, and it will automatically convert this BPMN XML right into an image that I can then also zoom in like this. And then I can really um, go into the details of what this BPMN process was all about. So this is actually already quite cool, um, but this is, of course, um, not enough. What I can do on top of that, let's go back to this um, issue here. If I'm now a little bit lazy or I don't know how to use this raw thing, I can also um, use a BPMN diagram that I have on my machine, and then I can just directly drag and drop it into GitHub. It will upload the, the um, BPMN XML, and then the same thing will happen. It will be processed by a Git bot that they built, um, and will automatically render then in GitHub. Um, so this is quite nice. Um, now they build something on top of that, um, which is even cooler, I think. This is um, a Chrome extension that you can just install in your browser directly, and this allows you basically, in any website that you allow it, um, to automatically display BPMN diagrams on hovering. So for example, here we have a long list of um, diagrams, and what I can do is I can just hover over these different um, BPMN diagrams, and then I will directly see a preview of how the BPMN diagram looks like. Um, and also CMMN <laughs> and DMN. <laughs> so that's really cool. <clears throat> 
Let's welcome Johannes and Sebastian, who will talk what you can do with Jenkins and a little bit of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as uh, Felix already mentioned, um, traffic light and wood. Uh, so we wanna, uh, our Hack Days project was the Jenkins traffic light and what that actually means. Uh, we will, uh, you will see in a couple of minutes. Um, this was done by um, uh, Ralph, who is somewhere here, Sebastian and, and me. And yeah, so we are all developers at um, Kamunda. And what we do is, of course, we develop uh, new features and fix some bugs. And, uh, but we're also writing text tests to make sure that the uh, software works as expected. And of course, um, we, we run those tests while we are implementing the stuff. Uh, but of course, we don't want to manually run those tests every time. So we have a guy that's called um, Jenkins <laughs> that is doing this for us. So pretty cool. How does that actually work? I assume that not everyone knows Jenkins, maybe. So he's a cool friend of mine. <laughs> uh, so what I usually do um, when I have some changes, I push them to, to GitHub. Then Jenkins immediately knows, OK, there's some new uh, piece of software, so I need to test that automatically. Uh, he's so he, he, Jenkins is building the project. He's testing it. And either the build is, is successful, so it's green, or there's a timeout and some tests were failing, then it's red. So you can already see it's some, it assembles a bit like a traffic light, but still, what has this to do with traffic light? Um, so to, to get a bit of insight, what's the idea is, um, let's have a look at our morning routine as a developer. So usually we go to the homepage of Jenkins, and there we have to go to the, uh, like click on all to get all the, the projects, and we click on come on optimize, and um, because we are developers there, and uh, then we the master build, and then we can see, oh, if it was successful or not. Uh, a tedious work, you know, four <laughs> clicks, and it's really annoying. <laughs> and of course, because we work as at a, a software process automation company, we thought, is there a way to somehow show the status of Jenkins um, while we are sitting in the office without, you know, doing all those clicks? Um, yeah, of course there is. Why not building a traffic light, right? Amazing idea, I know. And what is, how could that look like? We mount a traffic light to the wall, which is showing the the status of Jenkins. All right, uh, I know what you think. Um, why is the office empty? You're paying so much money to come under. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, we trust us. We um, immediately got to work, and we started to, to get some um, or create some blueprints to have the dimensions of the corpus and also like the, the state machine, so how the, like, the, the lights should uh, turn on and off. And uh, of course, we got also some timber and um, t t uh, started to drill some holes in there. And you can also see how I usually look like when I commit something. <laughs> and and um, yeah, of course, we had to assemble everything. You can also see here that everything is very professional, especially when you look at, the, at, the, at this picture. You can see that um, the, the bulb sockets are um, uh, fixed by rubber bands, so this will definitely hold forever. <laughs> uh, just to make sure, so this is very professional, of course. And during that time, I think Ralph, uh, what was he doing? I think he was playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, of course, he was implementing the, the traffic light so that make sure that everything works as, as expected. And yeah, then we just had to you know, paint the wood and then create some uh, visors. And then um, I, I think it's there. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> OK, I think this is the time to hand over to Sebastian. And we go to the demo, right? Mm -hmm. All right, um, you can already see now it's yellow. So the problem is, uh, apparently, if you refresh the page, um, the last build failed. You can already see that. So it's, it's, that's why it's yellow. Then we start another build. Maybe there were some infrastructure problems. And that's why it didn't work out. So what you hopefully, what it Ah, yeah, you can see it, it flashes, right? So you see that it actually is building right now and testing the software. <laughs> of course, this is a, this is a test um, Jenkins job, so um, they're usually the ones that we are implementing. Ah, it's failing again, damn it. So now it's red. Um, all right, Sebastian, maybe you can fix that. That's usually how, the, how it works. I break everything, and then I tell Sebastian, Sebastian, can you fix that? Um, so this is, this is reality you're seeing here right now on stage. And then, let's hope, fingers crossed, does it do something? 
is it building? Not yet. Ah, push. Now the, the, the code was committed, so he fixed basically. He's like simulating the fix of, um, and the, just changing the exit code to just to simulate that. Now it's, it's flashing again, pretty cool. And then hopefully when everything, work, uh, everything works out, it should turn green. <laughs> green. <laughs> green. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Of course, we are proper software engineers, so we try to think of every edge case, so maybe there's some connect the problems with the connections to Jenkins, so let's see what happens if we uh, plug off the cable. Um, so we see, oh, the, 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 the traffic light's going crazy, and of course, if it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like it's getting really angry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's it. Wow. Thank you very much. Okay, well, next up through a cloud of smoke, I assume, is um, Tobias. If you guys were in the workshop uh, yesterday, you would have seen Tobias do a talk about the command of from the certs library. Uh, can you see him through that? No. <laughs> Are you all right? I hope you can. Yeah. Fog machines My for magic everybody. Entrance. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, this time he's going to talk about a hack day project that involves JRPC. JRPC and, um, yeah, and what he did with that. Take it away. Okay, great. Okay, you can see it. So, um, as you can see me, but you can't see the slides somehow. <laughs> um, what I, uh, the topic I want to talk about is um, external tasks. Um, we have heard about those a lot. Um, so Komodo Runtime provides um, a very lovely thing for it. That's the REST API. So you can, uh, um, you can work on the external tasks that you have um, in no matter what language you like, uh, at least if it's understanding REST and can work with it, that's fine. So that's a nice pair, but since external tasks are usually done by external task workers, which are usually machines, we are talking about machine-to-machine -machine communication here. And well, this is fine with REST and HTTP, uh, HTTP 1.1, but you can actually do better. And um, the thing that you can pair it with is gRPC. So um, if you know ZB or something about it, you may know that they use it a lot. So they use it for every uh, communication. That's the protocol. Um, it's invented by Google. They open sourced it, so it's a, it's a different framework, um, and it's using HTTP2. And with that, you get a lot of um, cool stuff that's bundled with it, so you don't have to do the long polling that you may know um, when you use the REST API and have a JavaScript or Java uh, client, for example. Um, you don't need all of that stuff. So I wanted to know if this works together. So can we build a gRPC API for only the external tasks? So um, for example, if you have a project um, and you just want to expose the external task API via gRPC, uh, and nothing more than that, because we have a lot of customers that um, just want to provide the external task to the outside, um, but they have to use the whole REST API and have to expose the whole REST API um, in order to do that. So, and together with Ben, I had a look into this, and we tried to come up with a solution um, that provides this, and it actually works. Um, we were, um, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not just claiming it, I'm sorry. Um, and we built something here. Um, so we built up a little repository. And um, let me just go there. So this is it. So this is the repository, nothing very special. Um, so I guess the title is saying what it does. Um, so we provide a Spring Boot starter for it. Um, so you can use it in your project. Um, just simply integrate the Spring Boot starter. Just let me quickly go there. Um, what you actually have to do is just integrate this little lovely dependency into your Spring Boot starter project, and what you then gain is a gRPC API for external tasks, and that's it. So assuming you have your Commander Engine um, as a, in your Spring Boot starter project, you just add this as well, and then there you go. That's it. Um, we also provide an example for it, so you can have a look into this repository if you like. Um, we can share it afterwards. Um, what I did is I started the example, so I just uh, took the example that we, um, that we pushed, um, I started it, so the server is up and running. It, um, it includes the web apps um, for, for our case here. Um, so let me log in there. Whip, and that, very secret. Um, we have one process definition deployed here, which is a gRPC example, which is very simple. So we have a start, and, uh, start event, which goes over to um, an external task, service task, and it spawns 20 um, instances in parallel, um, and then waits for them to be finished. Um, so let's see if I, when I start um, this process here right now, just gonna click here. So now we have it up and running, and what you can see is that we have 20 external tasks waiting. 
since we didn't start a worker yet, um, they are lying there and uh, waiting. So let me start up a client. We also provide um, a Spring Bootified um, client example um, that we mainly just uh, spawn from the profile that comes with the, with the API. So you can spin up your client in whatever language you like. Um, so there's a, lit, a bit less work than with the current external task um, pattern. Um, when I spin up this client now, it's trying to fetch and lock tasks, and it's also trying to complete them. So what you can see now is that it's working on them. It's completing some of them. It has like a random time uh, working on it. And you can see that now there are 14 left, there are 11 left, and I guess you get it. Um, what I also can do is um, I can spin up another client, of course. So um, they're all gone, so no tasks there anymore. Um, let's say I spin up a second client here. So we have two of them running. Let's scroll this up to make this a bit more uh, visual. Whoop. So this one's coming up and running. So um, they're now both running. And if I start another instance, um, what will happen is they will um, round robin distribute the work. So you can see now that they are both fetching st stuff. They're doing stuff, working, and that's pretty awesome. So they're distributing work. Oh, they're already done, so they're pretty fast. So now they're not working anymore. Both of them are uh, basically done. And what I can also do is I can kill one of them in the process of um, working on them. And then what we can see is they're both working on them. And I will just shut down this one. And the other one is just picking up all the tasks that are left and is finishing the work. And that's it. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. So if you have attended uh, KamundaCon in the past, you surely remember the next presenter that we already have here on stage. Um, last year, he presented a very interesting um, topic. He actually brought night mode into cockpit. Um, that was really exciting. Um, the year before, he did something that I um, liked even more. He created a game, more or less, where you could be a token in virtual rea reality. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen this year. So let's welcome Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Sebastian, <laughs> and it's time for some audience participation. So please raise your hand if you have seen and enjoyed one of my past presentations. Yeah, quite a few. Awesome. Now, please raise your hand if you have actually installed one of my plugins. <laughs> OK, so you have enjoyed my presentations, but actually not installed any of them. So my takeaway from this is that I should give you a little bit more insight in how to actually install a plugin in Kamunda. <laughs> so this is what my talk will be about, installing a plugin <laughs> in Kamunda. So you know that I developed a plugin, so you can just go to my GitHub page, and then you can click on repository, and then you can scroll down and find the plugin that you want to install. Let's say you want to install Kamunda Night Mode, the stuff that I presented last year. So you click on that, then you go to the repository page, and you can click on Clone or Download to open this dialog, and then you download the zip, and then you wait until the file is downloaded. Then you go to your download directory. This is mine. It's very organized, so it's very easy to find what I just downloaded. <laughs> it's, ju it's right there. <laughs> so then I can extract it, and then I have a bundle of files. So now what? I have Kamunda as an engine at the one hand, and at the other side, I have a bundle of files that are a plugin. And now I have to integrate them somehow. So I probably have to copy the files somewhere, but let's see if we can ask the documentation where exactly. So this is the uh, Kamunda documentation, and then you can go to Web Applications, click on the little triangle, not the text link, and then you can go to Cockpit, and then to uh, Extending, and then to Plugins, and then you can contemplate the nature of a Cockpit plugin. <laughs> Looks like this, the nature of a Cockpit plugin. The nature of a Cockpit <laughs> plugin. <laughs> So this doesn't really help me, but I continue Googling, and then I find out, well, it's really easy to install a plugin. I just have to copy the files to uh, server Apache Tomcat Web Apps Kamunda App Cockpit Scripts Night Mode. Very easy. I can do that. I do that. And then I just have to write some JavaScript in a config.js file <laughs> to enable this plugin. And after I've done all that, 
I can finally enjoy my night mode, which is, which is basically a dark theme for Cockpit. So let's recap. We had to download the files. We had to extract them, copy them to a, uh, to a path deeply nested in my file system, and then also write some JavaScript. Let's compare that with installing an app on your phone. There you go to an app store, click install, and then you wait a couple seconds to download it, and then you have it. So I have one vision. And this vision is that installing my night mode plugin that I worked a lot for it should be as easy to install as installing a new app on your phone. So this is my plan. This is how Cockpit basically looks like. We have a back end, and this serves the Cockpit, which is a front end. And then I have in there, in Cockpit, a plugin store where the user can go to and where all the plugins are. And in the back end, we have a plugin installer that takes care of all the stuff we had to do manually, downloading it, uh, extracting the files to the correct location, and then configuring it that it works. And in addition, we have a plugin marketplace where all the cool stuff is inside, night mode, token view. We can have translation files in there. We can have productivity tools, too, if, you, if we want to. <laughs> but we can also have games and all the other stuff we can imagine. And then the user just goes to the plugin store, says, I want to install this plugin. And the plugin installer takes care of getting the stuff from the marketplace, installing it, and the user is happy, hopefully. So let's have a look at the live demo. Basically, what I envisioned is two, two parts here. We have the plugin store and the plugin installer, which need to be integrated in Kamunda, obviously. So how do you get an additional feature into Kamunda that's not already inside Kamunda? Well, with the plugin, obviously. <laughs> yes, we are going to install the plugin store as a plugin in Kamunda. And I promise you, it's the last plugin you need. <laughs> so it's called the last plugin. It's available on my GitHub page. <laughs> And it's very easy to install. See, it's, it's only like three levels deep in the file system. And we already compiled it for you so that you can easily install it. I prepared this. So this is Cockpit with the plugin installed and nothing else. So if I go to the process, for example, I can see there's no night mode button here. I cannot activate the dark theme. But there's a new entry in the navigation. It's called plugin store. And if I click there, I can see all the stuff that's already available. Like I, we have tic-tac-toe, we have space invaders, we have translations, the German translation, obviously. It's called the Kamunda Pilotenkanzel. We have comics, and obviously, we also have Kamunda night mode. And let's remember, we had to download it, extract it, copy the files to the location, and then write some JavaScript to enable a plugin there. Let's do the same with the plugin store. It's done. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can reload the page here, and I can see it's now an installed plugin. And if I go back to the processes and to the invoice, I have this button which is activate night mode. And here I have the dark theme which I presented last year. Something else happened last year, but let's not go there. <laughs> so this is a plugin store. And you might be wondering, how can I get my plugin in there? And how can you make sure that it still works? <laughs> well, this is basically the second part of this one here, right? This is the plugin marketplace. And this is just another GitHub repository. And if we go there, it's also on my GitHub account. Uh, you can see that every plugin we just saw is a directory in this repository. So in order to get your plugin in, you can just do a pull request. And like in a real app store, a team of very uh, senior engineers, in this case me, just has a look at the plugin and says, oh, I don't like this plugin, reject. <laughs> or I like this one, I accept it. It has cats in them. <laughs> so basically, it works like a real app store. And if we have a look in here, uh, the source directory contains all the files we just downloaded manually. And in addition to that, we have a setup JSON, which instructs the installer we have in this plugin, this one here, how to install this plugin. So this is the plugin store. I hope you like it. Yes. I know some of you might be a little bit disappointed that basically I've just shown you a new way to install the stuff I have already shown you. So 
two years ago, I've shown you Be a Token, a game where you can be a token and go through your process in virtual reality. Last year, we had Night Mode, which is a procedurally generated story-based game based on your BPMN processes. So what could I do this year? And this is the answer. It's Cockpit Shootout. <laughs> it's a first-person shooter based on Quake 3 that not only runs inside your browser, but inside Cockpit and is installable right from this new plugin store. So let's install it. It's that easy. And then let's go to the dashboard. And we see that all the useful stuff has been removed. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> we now load Quake and can now play Quake in Cockpit and have a nice shootout here. And what better way is there to end two days of amazing talks with fantastic speakers than to conclude Kamundacon 2019 with a bang? Thank you very much. <laughs>